Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief, trusted, tested, true. Good morning, everybody. So you wouldn't believe it. It's February, early March time, but already we are into tractor working season. Today, it is 75 degrees outside and warm. Now, of course, it's blowing 30 miles an hour wind because we couldn't be in Nebraska and just have a nice day. But we have the tractor in the shop, John Deere 8335R, and hooked up to it, we have, well, the name on this thing's a little bit controversial. I call it a root sizer. Grant calls it a stumper. I think it's also called a stock puller. You could call it anything you want, but the job that it does is really cool. So what we're doing is seed bed prep. It's not planting season yet. We have to wait till a few more weeks for that. We need the ground temperatures to warm up. And honestly, I think it's supposed to snow later this week, um, but we're doing some seed bed prep while we can. So what this thing does is in a field where we had a crop last year, for example, let's say corn, the combine cuts off the plant with some plants still left in the ground and certainly the roots still left. So what this machine does is it actually has some chopper roller things on the front. That's their scientific name. And these just go through and they're breaking up a plant material. So you can see this is what it does. Breaks it up like that. And then any other trash that the combine left in that row, it's just chopping it up. And then these things are stock pullers, just two big metal discs that come together. They meet with just a fraction of space in between them. And what this does is we're going along and it pulls the root ball out and flings it back. It cuts in a V. So we're getting the root ball out here, all this hard mass, but we're not taking too much dirt. We're just taking a little bit and then it's leaving just a nice flat prepped area. So when we drag the planter through, which is actually behind us right now, our row cleaners just sweep any of this stuff that would be left behind and we can plant. So we like to go over all of our acres, corn and soybean, at least one time, usually two times with this machine. And today is kind of the perfect day for it. So this is an Orthman 5, I guess. Just a, I think it's 5SP, isn't it? Well, yeah, but there's just one number. Usually I feel it's like not, on implements so and equipment. 5 stock puller. Is that the official name? I think that's the official Orthman name. So this is the same brand that we got the pivot track closer from. So it's the same Orthman Green. I have been running a root slicer. My goodness, I think that was just about the first job I ever did on a tractor. Because it's kind of hard to mess up. But it's a really fun and it's a really fast job. You can fly through the field with this thing. But as you can see, there is a lot of moving parts. So it's really important before we use it to make sure this thing gets all greased up. Which Gage has done. Already. Which Gage has done. And then also because the tractor hasn't been doing much since harvest and it's also gonna be moving pretty fast through the field, it's also important that we grease all of the things on the tractor. So there's all these points when you come up here. I think there's probably eight different grease points here. So we're going to make sure to get all that done. We should also probably check if the oil needs to be changed on this old girl. I can't honestly remember the last time, but we do it every 200 hours. It's got to load up first. Thing just done. This thing's kind of slow. The monitor takes a little bit. She's old. 2011. We have 80 hours left. Before our next oil changed. So in addition to greasing, we have to make a little bit of adjustment because this thing goes over a lot of acres and things can just kind of slowly move over time. So here are our adjustment points. So this is the one that when you loosen it, it allows this to go back and forth. And like I said, we want them to be just about touching when they go through the field. And so we have on this one in particular, there's a lot of space in between this. So we are going to loosen these up and then we're going to unscrew this and tighten this in and it should just push this in closer so we can get our discs to touch. Okay. Then put the big socket on it. Yeah, put it on there because that socket's going to be on there tight. I didn't know we were using the snap on one. It's fancy. We're fancy. This one's going to be on pretty tight. Yeah, just bump it a little bit. Okay, 
and now I'll tighten this one. They're already stuck together. Oh, there you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, like, how much? So then you just take this, okay. push it on, and then around there, you should move it. Hey, look at that. Okay. Then you just tighten this one back up. We'll tighten the rest of them. And do a quick like tighten on this one, probably. Yeah. yeah. A little. Just like a little. Yeah. Think that's okay? Yeah. That's gonna be good. That wobbler thing is weird. Pepper is uh, spending her time working on the Jeep here. What are you seeing in there, girlfriend? Anything good? Probably needs to be fixed, huh? Like so we've moved fields and uh, this is our field that we have that goes right up against Interstate 80. And if you remember this harvest, we had some kind of little accident happened in our field. We had actually somebody crash from the interstate, drive through a fence, mow over our corn, and then drive right back over the ditch and get back onto the interstate. But it left this big patch in our crops that we found with the combine. Today, we have another kind of interesting scene at this field. Very interesting. We are headed towards the interstate in the field and as you can see, right off the edge, we have a totally burned up semi-trailer. There's a skid steer out here, a dumpster. It looks like they're cleaning things up. I don't see any truck, but my goodness, talk about carnage. And it is so windy today. It looks like it got burned into the ditch even. Almost got into our field. Wow. Look at this bucket he has on this skid steer. Fire almost got to our field. So if you were a firefighter out here, thank you so much. I'm so glad that the fire didn't spread any more than it already did. I'm trying to figure out what was in it. It almost looks like chicken, maybe? They have a dumpster out here. I wonder if this happened maybe in the middle of the night or something, because it looks like they've been cleaning up. I actually see, Grant, you see that battery sitting on the front of the trailer? wonder if the fire didn't start in the back of the trailer because the reefer unit kind of looks still intact. But man, the wind blew all night last night and is steady today. So I'm Look at that bucket. glad it's not any worse. What kind of bucket is that, Grant? It's a clamshell bucket. That big skid steer. That is a big skid steer. Looks like there's a patrol car keeping an eye on everything over there. I actually love working in the field by the interstate because there is always something to watch. Looks like a towing company arrived. Wonder if they're going to haul the dumpster away or how they're going to try to clean up this mess. Maybe they'll have to come through our field. Maybe. Have you ever watched a cleanup like this happen, Grant? Uh, well, the hole in the fence is down here. They wouldn't even have to take down a fence. Wow. That guy in the skid steer looks like he's been at it for quite some time. What a mess. And look at that. Do you see? There's the hole in the fence where a car just absolutely demolished it. You can even see the corn stalks that were run oh, you can over. You still see the tire tracks from where they went in. Look at that. Do you see the tire tracks that are right behind? Oh, that's the, it's not a patrol car. That's a towing company car. What do you think, Grant? Are they going to take the trailer away on that? No, they'll have to do something else. What a mess. What a mess.
a couple hours have gone by and this is all that's left. We know somebody at that towing company and it turns out it was a trailer full of beef, not chicken. Oh, no way, there's a stellar fuel trailer going by. Cool. I know it doesn't seem like much, but 12 miles an hour in a tractor feels like you are just absolutely flying. This was one of the first fields that we used the Orthman Track Tiller Pivot Track Closer, which was a new thing for us to use this year. We close our pivot tracks every year, but this was kind of a new type of implement that we used to close our pivot tracks. And I was out here on this field, and I don't know if you've noticed, but we have gone over two pivot tracks since I started this video. And you can't even tell with the old pivot track closer that we were using. There we go. That was a pivot track right there. Going over it, even after they'd been closed, it left like a big mound and you would just bounce right over them, which pretty much defeated the point of closing them in the first place. We irrigated a lot this summer. So those tire tracks were really deep. So I'm just very, very happy because we haven't done anything in the field since we used that pivot track closer. We did that just a couple weeks after harvest. So this is the first time I'm really seeing the results and I'm very, very happy makes going through the field with the tractor so much smoother. When we started this tractor job here, we started about noon today, and we took a picture of the hour counter on our tractor. Here it is. And in theory, we could go until noon tomorrow. So we have a lot to get done. At some point, I'm going to have to get out of the cab and pass the reins over to Gage, and then pass the reins over to Grant because I might get tired. We'll probably have to go to the bathroom eventually. But my phone is a C-type charger and the aux cord and the phone charger that I have in here are both lightning cables. So uh, I'm pretty good in silence. I can sit alone with my own thoughts, but we do not have Bluetooth radio in here and I can't connect my phone. So I've been doing just a lot of thinking to myself over the past several hours. and the next coming many hours. Maybe I can get one of my friends to come out and ride with me and talk with me so I don't go crazy out here. Might lose my mind at the end of this. So the day started out really nice, beautiful day. Then as the day kind of went on, it got windier and is continuing to get windier. I just got an alert on my phone that says heavy snow is expected to start in just a couple minutes, which is crazy because it was like 70 degrees this morning. So I don't know how snow is going to start. I don't know. I certainly don't think we can do this if the ground is frozen. So I guess we will see how the weather turns out. The sky is blue. Maybe, uh, maybe Apple weather is crazy. Very important to pay attention so that we don't hit obstacles in the way like this well and motor. That would be a bad way to uh, end our day really quickly. So what's really nice about this tractor is that it is equipped with auto steer, meaning I am hands off right now. But when we come to the end, I still have to do all the turning around by myself. So we finish up our pass. I lift up and make sure I'm coming all the way out. And I've got plenty of room because my implement is quite wide on either side. So I want to make sure I have plenty of room turn around, set the auto steer line as soon as I can, and I pull into my row to just kind of square up a little bit. Okay, but then to really get myself fully straight, I kind of like get a running start on my pass. I back up. Very important to not back up with the implement down. That is a mistake I learned the hard way. Start pulling forward, set the implement down, and start getting up to speed. Even though it's auto steer, meaning that the tractor is driving itself, keeping itself in the road, doing a perfectly straight line, I still have to be hyper vigilant, pay attention. There's a lot of spinning, moving parts back here, and I want to make sure that they all stay that way. So I just keep rotating around, taking a good look behind me, making sure that it's a very uniform look across the bar, looking ahead of me to gauge where I'm at in the field. And before you know it, you're at the other end, you pick up, turn around, and do it all over again. Like I said, we're going over every single acre twice, so we've got a lot of ground to cover, literally. The bar that I'm pulling is rigid. There's no flex to it. So it's also very important that when you turn around, before you start turning your steering wheel, you make sure that your implement is picked all the way up. 
because those discs are so rigid, I would not want to turn with them in the ground and warp them or bend them. It's really important. Like those adjustments that we made, we want them to be close together. So we're just ripping out that ripple. We're not taking up any extra soil. And it really just creates the perfect place to plant into. Since I have so much time with you guys today, I figured now was as good of a time as any to tell you that I am going to be going to St. George, Utah in March, and I'm going to be competing in Matt's off-road game. So Matt has an off-road record channel. He is up in Utah, and he puts on this event every year, a place for YouTubers of all kinds to compete in some kind of course. I don't have a ton of details about it yet. And I have been paired up with Rory from Trail Mater, and he is going to be coaching me through some obstacles. I'm going to be driving his dune buggy thing around. It's gonna be a good time. And there's also a booth that I'm gonna have set up. You can buy t-shirts. There's gonna be a meet and greet time. There's a ton of other really cool people that are going to be there. So if you're available or live in that area, please get yourself a ticket and stop out because it's going to be a lot of fun. That's probably going to be our last big thing. Then we will come home and start seriously gearing up for planting. So I was really glad when it was March because if it was any later than that, I don't think I would have been able to make it. So if you have a chance, you should definitely check that out. Come see me, see Grant, come say hi. Oh my goodness. Do you see that guys? It's snowing outside, just barely, but it is. I know it doesn't look like much, but there's kind of a draw here, and it seems like it pulled pretty hard on those outside wings. So I'm gonna get out and just kind of clean up that clumpage, and we'll keep going. Snow's really coming down now. Whew. All right, I got out there, got it unplugged, it wasn't bad. I think it was just the weight of that bar was just a little bit much right there. So I just picked up, no problem. Everything still spins fine. But I am not properly bundled for blowing snow. My eyes were getting absolutely pelted out there. I don't have gloves either. I was not, I was not expecting it to snow. But any stocks that I missed where I picked up just a quick little section, like I said, I'm going over this again, so that shouldn't be a big deal at all. I'm going to keep an eye on the weather and just continue going. Yes, that's all snow out there. The forecast says it's only supposed to snow for about an hour, which is crazy because snow is already accumulating on the ground. So hopefully it stops soon and we can continue going. Everything was going fine, and then all of a sudden it started throwing a code. This is what it looks like right here. And it beeps really loud and tells me I need to stop like immediately. So I called Grant because I haven't seen that code before and he said it's done that before. So I'm going to do the old trick, shutting it off. And we're just gonna wait a while, like at least a good five minutes before we turn it back on. And then we'll try going and see if that fixes the problem. Well, it started. That's good. I know I look kind of ridiculous right now, but it's been a while. The ground's getting colder. I want to make sure that it's still doing a good job. Well, you guys, we waited it out. The storm seems to have passed and the skies have cleared. The tractor, however, is so dirty. Thing's gonna need a good wash after this job. It's officially that time. Lights are on. It's getting dark outside. We have somewhat of a sunset going on here. It is officially actually dark outside. Things are still working. I have to say though, I am getting very hungry. It's 7 p.m. It's eight o'clock. Grant is going to come out and take over for me so that I can get some dinner. 
I was just thinking, man, wouldn't it be horrible if I wasn't paying attention? I just ran straight into the pivot. That would be, that would be bad. Here is all that's left of that semi-trailer that burnt up. Just a little bit of mangled metal and that black part in the grass to reveal that anything happened here earlier. Best laid plans, right guys? Grant came out and took over for me. We had supper and then the weather was just not cooperating and things were not working right. And then a bolt broke. We ended up unhooking the root slicer from the 8335 giving it to our neighbor to borrow for a little while, and then hooking it up to the 8345R, which we're in right now. And if everything goes well, this should be our last day run sizing. So you might notice that I am standing in a building and not in a field. And that is because that weather came in. I thought it was just going to be a few flurries. It ended up snowing over five inches of thick, wet, heavy snow that just soaked into the ground. So while I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to quite finish this up yet, it was really great because as you know, we've had a really, really dry year last year and we just need any moisture that that soil can get to prep us for 2024 growing season. So the snow has started to melt, rain is on its way. So we are not going to be able to finish this job up yet, but the rain and weather actually worked out really good because I am on my way now to Utah to compete in Matt's off-road games. So we're going to take a brief pause in farming content and you're going to see some off-road stuff. We are going to be meeting up with some really cool other YouTubers, a lot of people that I've never met before. I'm really excited. Hopefully I will see you guys there. So thanks for watching today's video. I hope you learned a little something about root slicing, stumping, stock pulling, stock chopping, whatever you want to call it. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.